Hello, this is Stefan Mückstein from Energy Lab. Um, today we're going to talk about mounting structures for solar mini grids and the evolution of these mounting structures over the past 10 years or so. I think this is uh, potentially interesting for the viewers to see also what type of company Anaware is because Anaware is heavily focused on engineering and innovation and in future videos you will see other areas where Anaware is involved in innovation but uh, the mounting structure is definitely part of that. And for this video, I'm being joined by Arif. Um, Arif, could you just briefly introduce yourself? Uh, hello, my name is Mohamed Arif Al Hamiri. Uh, I'm the lead mounting structure designer at Inaway. I joined Inaway about two and a half years back. Excellent. And Arif, just before we start talking about the mounting structures, if you can tell us a little bit more about yourself, you graduated from uh, the American University of Sharjah? Yeah, so I originally studied renewable energy engineering at the University of Sharjah. Uh, part of which I completed at the Technical University in Rabeswil, Switzerland. My work there involved designing wind turbine plates that works at a low wind speed. Uh, later on, I obtained my master's degree from the American University of Sharjah. My thesis was actually involved computational fluid dynamic work that involved some optimization on cooling techniques that are used to enhance the performance of gas turbines. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and, and how did this study and, and this educational background help you at Anywhere? How do you use it and what, what is your role yeah. at Anywhere? So, big part of what I'm using at Anywhere that I'm enjoying uh, doing modeling and also simulation mm -hmm. and trying to design and optimize product that can compete at the highest levels. So, what I do at Anywhere, I'm leading the effort of the design and the production of Anywhere solar mounting structure. I'm also responsible for the entire mounting structure uh, supply chain. I'm also leading the structural and permitting team that is uh, responsible for all uh, local authorities approval here. Excellent, yes. fantastic. So now when we start talking about the evolution of the mounting yeah. structures, we probably should go and meet Daniel in his office because basically we're talking about this evolution over the last 10 years. And as you said, you joined Anaware two and a half years ago. Yes. So the original, the first mounting structure that Anaware used was prior to join, uh, you joining. So let's go to Daniel and uh, talk to him a little yeah. bit about the first. Yes, Thanks, Daniel, for taking the time to talk to us. Um, today we're talking about the evolution of the mounting structure at Anaware. And I know you have this beautiful picture on your desk about the first installation of a mobile mounting structure. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Yeah, that was quite an experience because the first time it just didn't work. Um, and it wasn't the first one. It was the first one that we built, but about the fourth design because we spent about one and a half years of designing various structures before we got to one that, that we then could implement. Um, but how we got there was that there was nothing on the market. We wanted to start a solar uh, rental company and there was no solar structure on the market that could actually do that. You could Google and you'd find things that were about 10 kilowatts on a container. So we first went the container route. We managed to fit 25 kilowatts on top of the 20 foot container. That was a lot of engineering and way too expensive. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we tried 50 kilowatts, half of the container and half on the ground. And we realized that even then the container was too expensive. So in the end, we ended up with a 25 kilowatt module uh, that was ground mount and uh, that was optimized for mobility with slide in rails and, and ballasted and a seasonal tilt angle. Um, and when we first built it, the rails that I had ordered, being German, 42 millimeter gap for a 40 millimeter frame, arrived from India with a 38 millimeter spacing. So none of the rails fit. <laughs> so the first day was a complete disaster. And um, yeah, so it was the first mounting structure was quite an experience. Well, how long did it eventually take you to set up this mounting structure? I think we got it done in, in one or two days. In the end, we got out a couple of tools and some soap and finally managed to get the first modules in. And then we later ordered uh, versions that worked. And I think in the end, it worked out. We deployed that structure, uh, nearly a megawatt of it, over, over a number of installations between 2014 and 2016. Um, but yeah, today we use other solutions. Okay, so even though you look all super happy on the picture, it's, it's not your standard solution anymore, right? No, I think the solar industry has moved on. Back then panels were very expensive and we were trying to maximize the production of every kilowatt hour uh, from an expensive panel. Um, 
we later figured out that when panel prices were coming down, it made less sense to maximize the production and more sense to minimize the cost of the mounting structure. And we moved on to typically to structures that were used for roof mounting. Uh, there was a gigawatt scale industry in Europe using uh, roof mounting structures. And it turned out that a lot of them were very light and quite usable for our purposes. So for uh, quite a while between 2016 and, and 2019, the vast majority of our installations have been uh, using rooftop mounting structures. Okay, makes sense, great. Thanks Daniel, uh, I'll let you go now uh, and I'll go with Arif to see one of our installations. Thank you, good luck. Thanks. Okay, now we're here on one of these projects that you helped uh, design the mounting structure. Um, this is an enormous uh, project size-wise. Um, can you tell me more about it? Yeah, so when I first joined Enerware, uh, Enerware just had won the contract of this project. Now, this project surprisingly is the largest solar rooftop installation in the Middle East. And uh, later on, this project was awarded from the Middle East Solar Industry Association as the project of the year. Now, my job in this project was to design a mounting structure that is cost effective, that is robust, that is easy to install, and that is suitable for robotic cleaning, which is what we have done here. After we finalized the design of this project, we produced the profiles locally, and we shipped it to the location here at almost no time. Now, the design itself is innovative in such a way that it does not require any roof penetration. It does not require any heavy uh, foundation. In fact, with a smart engineering, we mapped out the palace requirement for the entire layout and we managed to use whatever is available at the site. So at some location, we have some ballast and in some location, we are using only the small gravel. Now, one crucial part here was also, I mean, we are installing projects in the Middle East and you know how severe the weather could be. Uh, corrosion is one main difficulty. So one thing that we have used in these projects and in the mounting structure that we designed here at Inaway is actually selecting a material that is good in terms of corrosion resistivity. We used here a special aluminum zinc coated material on our cold roll steel profiles, which has a superior effect in terms of corrosion resistivity more than the traditional hood dip galvanize, which everyone is using in the market. Now this is enormous, this is important, as it reduces our o and cost in the following decades. As also you can see, this structure is suitable for robotic cleaning. We have the robots running freely in all of this enormous layout. Now, Stefan, one important point, that the structure that we designed here at Enaway is carrying over 60,000 panels across different projects in UAE. Now, for every project, we have different requirements, and therefore, we are continuously improving the structure from the previous projects. Amazing. Yeah. Um, you spoke about um, the corrosion being a challenge. Yes. Is the temperature also a challenge for the uh, mounting structure or not so much? Like that, that the, the temperature, the heat, that, it, that because it's a metal structure, right? That it yes. ex expands and contracts. Uh, is that a challenge? Yes, of course. So we took the, the, the entire design of this plant is actually consists of individual tables at which we are leaving a gap between each corresponding tables to allow for the metal to expand and contract freely. Excellent, yeah. fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, let's now go to the warehouse and have a look at your latest uh, R&D project, yes. okay? let's go. Great. So now we are here in the warehouse, yeah. which you're also using as your R&D center <laughs> for uh, the mounting structure. Yeah. Um, what do you try to optimize as part of the mounting structure R&D? Is it the cost, the, the weight, the durability? Yeah. What we are doing here is a general optimization where we focus on all of the important factors to make whatever structure that we are producing cost effective, durable and more desirable for the client. So we work in cost, we work in easy of deployment, we work in easy of installation, easy to handle. So we look into the, all of these parts all together and we try to come up with a solution that is the best solution that we can offer to our clients. One of the obvious things that we can look at is basically the, the weight per meter square. It's very important for us to, to have the least amount of weight of 
steel or aluminum structures per meter square. This will obviously directly affect the material cost and handling cost. The second thing that we are looking at is basically the coverage ratio. So you can design a, a good, nice looking structure, but you are wasting the space of which that you can use to generate uh, energy. The structure that we design at Inaway, specifically the mounting structure that we showed in the previous part of this video, is a structure that achieved one of the lowest steel per meter square ratio, as well as one of the highest area coverage ratio per meter square. Great. Yeah. Excellent. And now we're basically standing in front of your latest creation, yeah. right? Uh, tell me a little bit more about yes. this one. So one of the uh, markets that we were trying to target for a very long time is the oil and gas uh, industry. The, the onshore rigs, for example, specifically stays in one location for four to six weeks. Now, typically for our off-grid business, uh, we usually require the power plant to stay in one location for at least six months to make a commercial sense. Now to tackle this sector, we designed this mobile, highly mobile structure that is basically foldable. Mm -hmm. It will start like this in a shipping container. It will start folding in this, once it reaches, it will, it will fold back to the side. Mm -hmm. And um, the client will just need to uh, plug the DC cable to an inverter and he will start generating uh, some energy. Amazing, Yeah. great. Um, I can see that all of the solar panels here on this mounting structure are broken. Yes. Uh, does that happen as part of the R&D effort? No, no, no. We initially start using broken panels for the, the prototyping uh, purposes to be able to tackle all of the, uh, you know, technical issues that we might face during folding, unfolding. Uh, you know, stresses might be one concern. At the end, obviously, once we are sure about all of the mechanism of the entire uh, structure, we're going to use new panels. We're going to do proper uh, analysis on the amount of stresses. If any micro cracks happen in the structure before we start selling it to our clients yeah okay very good yeah. and with this structure i suspect that you did not focus on weight because i can see you have relatively heavy concrete yeah. weights down there but here the the emphasis uh, is on speed of deployment is yes correct? speed of deployment is one thing also the how practical this solution is for uh, the oil and gas industry you know typically it's not a compacted ground that we are installing this we want to make sure that whatever support we have that our structure will not fall into the ground it has to be suitable for most of these grounds with the minimum amount of civil work that we could do in that location great yeah thank you so much for your time and yeah, sharing uh, all this information yes if you like the video, please press the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you next week. See you. Thanks. Bye.